Hey everyone, this is Josh with a digital security tutorial available at chaintuts.com. And today we're talking about your bad passwords. We're going to be talking about what makes passwords insecure versus secure, how hackers crack leaked passwords, and how to make those passwords better and safely and securely store them. I'm really excited for this one and I hope you enjoy it and find it informative. So let's talk about what makes a password secure or makes a password insecure and easy to be hacked. And what we need to talk about is the issue of length versus complexity. A lot of you may have been told that passwords that look like this B at NK 1 NG with a mix of capital and uppercase and an exclamation point added to the end is really a secure password. So this is a password that's relatively short that has a high degree of complexity. And unfortunately, while this practice has been widely adopted for a number of years, these types of passwords are actually really insecure, it turns out. Now, what about a longer pass phrase rather than a password, such as my money account here? It turns out that when it comes to password security, length matters much more than complexity, as in the sort of characters that you add to a password. And let's talk about why. So in order to understand why length is more important than complexity for passwords, we need to understand how passwords are stored and how passwords are cracked when hackers actually gain access to a password database. Passwords are not stored, hopefully, as plain text. So when you go to a website such as Facebook.com, Facebook does not store your password, Hunter2, in a database as the plain text Hunter2. What Facebook does is they run that password through a completely one-way irreversible function called a hash function that gives an output that's the same every time you run that same string through that function. So for example, my pass gives the hash starting with FB3F011 uh, run through the old and insecure MD5 hash function. So when you go to Facebook.com and enter your password, uh, the Facebook software runs your password through that hash function and makes sure that that hash matches the password hash that's in their database. Because these hash functions are one way and deterministic, they can validate who you are through your password without having to actually store the plain text password, my pass. So how do hackers then find out what your password is so they can get into other websites where you might be using that password? When a database of passwords is breached and put out onto the uh, internet for hackers to take a look at, what they have to do is they have to actually just guess a bunch of passwords by using that hash function to try and match the outputted hashes from the database. So for example, if they leak a database and it has FB3F0 in that password database, they're going to use a computer, and oftentimes a computer using a uh, GPU or a server farm, to do a bunch of guesses. They're going to try AAAA, AAAB, and all of the possible combinations that they can try until they find my pass which matches that hash function that they found in the database. Now, brute force is a pretty um, brute force way of approaching that problem. Uh, what hackers can also use are what are called dictionaries and rainbow tables, which are two variations of a very similar idea. And that is, they already have pre-computed tables of uh, existing hashes for the most commonly used passwords. So for example, there really are people out there that use password123 uh, for their banking password. And uh, since these are so common, a lot of the cracking software that is used will try to run through those existing uh, guesses first to, to get the most common ones. 
Now, in general, this takes a bunch of work and computing resources to do. So whether or not you're using a pre-computed rainbow table or you're doing brute force guessing against a leaked password database, it takes a lot of computing power and time. And so in order to make our passwords more secure and harder to crack, we need to make this work harder. Computing is a finite resource and computing does have limitations. And so if we can make the math uh, impossible to work against, we can make our passwords much more secure. And this takes us back to the topic of length versus complexity. It turns out that the reason that adding length matters so much more than adding complexity is it's in how we compute the uh, simple number of possible password combinations. The total number of combinations you can have for a particular password space is the complexity or character set to the length power. So for example, let's say we have a four character password and that password is comprised of just numbers and letters. So in the space of lowercase, uppercase, and number characters, that is 62 possible characters for each slot in the password. And since we have four spaces, that's 62 times 62 times 62 times 62, or 62 to the fourth power. And it turns out that the way that that math works the exponent matters a lot more than the base. So the length matters a lot more than the complexity. Now let's look at a concrete example of this. So I created a small program uh, called PassPerms that uh, does some calculations on the number of total possible passwords and an estimation of how long the password space will take to crack using consumer or professional hardware. And what this does is it shows the difference between adding additional complexity versus adding additional length. So if we take an eight character password, our passwords are always going to be eight characters. We can add a ton more symbols. We can go from just numbers, uh, numbers and letters, all the way up through all of the possible ASCII symbols minus space, uh, which is a character set of 92. And if you add a bunch more symbols and wingdings and this, that, and the other thing that you can hammer on the keyboard to an eight character password, adding that additional complexity will only buy you hours of time before your password is cracked on consumer grade hardware. Using my laptop, that's an $800 gaming laptop, you can add all the symbols you want to an eight character password, and I can brute force run through all of the possible guesses in the space of about eight hours using a Hashcat program uh, that anybody has access to. And that's a problem for password uh, security. However, going from eight characters to 12 characters using only letters and numbers, no fancy symbols that are hard to remember, that makes the difference between cracking a password in minutes to having hundreds of years necessary to crack that password on even professional grade hardware. That is why length is a lot more important. So Josh, how do I fix my bad passwords? It's hard for me to remember a bunch of lengthy passphrases. Well, the first thing that we have to talk about is one of the existing problems, and that's the fact that you're probably reusing your passwords a lot of places. Because creating good secure passwords uh, does require making passwords that are a bit hard to remember, you may be using the same password for your bank, your Gmail, uh, and some other crappy websites that don't have very good security. And that's a huge issue, because while your bank security Gmail security and Facebook security uh, of their password databases may be very, very good, you may be reusing that password on a website with very bad security. And if that password database gets breached and hackers compute your password using one of these techniques, they will now try to use that same password on your bank account, your Facebook, and your Gmail, compromising a great deal of your digital life. So the first thing to stop doing is reusing passwords. Seriously, 
you know, I kind of understand reusing passwords for websites you don't really care about, and I'll admit I've done that too. But make sure right now that you're not reusing passwords for anything that would cause you a great deal of headache if the password gets compromised. That means your email, your Facebook, your bank accounts, and those sorts of things. And you're probably wondering, well, I need to have unique, strong passwords for all of these things. How do I remember all this? And the secret is to not have to remember your passwords at all. Use what is called a password manager. A password manager is a very secure piece of software that encrypts all of your passwords and stores them in this encrypted database. And to unlock that encrypted database, you only have to remember one very good and very secure master password. So common examples of this include LastPass, which is a commercial option, or KeePass, which is an open source option. It depends on what you like and what you need in terms of usability. LastPass offers autofill options in a browser extension, so uh, you can set it right up with your Chrome or your Firefox browser, and uh, it'll automatically fill in passwords when you visit a website. That's a commercial option that is very well audited and well trusted in the community. But if you want an open source alternative, KeePass is one that is also very well respected within the security community. Now someone asked me, well, doesn't this create a single point of failure? And the reality is, no, it does not in practice. The reality is, with your current security model, you're trying to remember one, two, maybe three not very good passwords for a bunch of different websites. And that's a very, very broad attack surface for hackers. Again, you may be reusing a password, so if crappy website A gets hacked, hackers now have a broad uh, set of websites that they could try to gain access to using that same password. On the other hand, password managers are again very, very secure and very well audited pieces of software. And that, that point of failure is much, much harder to break. And it also probably means that you have a very specific threat actor trying to go after your specific credentials, which means you have bigger problems. So use a password manager. This takes away uh, the hassle of having to remember any passwords at all. In fact, I don't know most of my passwords from most of the websites I use because I use the password uh, manager to randomly generate very lengthy and secure passwords that are just strings of uh, different characters and numbers. They're not even pronounceable. Uh, and that's great. I don't have to remember any of those. I only have to remember one very good master pass phrase that's a sentence, something that's memorable to you. So I hope this tutorial has been interesting and informative and helps you fix your passwords. I don't want to see any of my friends or family or any of you out there on the internet go through the headache of having your accounts compromised. So I hope you've learned something today about what makes a password good and I hope you'll consider going out and starting to use a password manager instead of putting your plain text passwords in your Google Drive. Thanks for watching and thanks for learning something new with me today.